Welcome back to Democracy Now! A new civil war is threatening to explode in Iraq as U.S.-backed Iraqi government forces fight Shia militiamen for control of Basra and parts of Baghdad. Heavy fighting engulfed Iraq's two largest cities and spread to other towns yesterday. The Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki gave fighters of the Mehdi Army, led by the radical cleric Muqtada al-Sadr, 72 hours to surrender their weapons. Those are the opening lines to a report in today's edition of The Independent of London, written by Patrick Coburn, the paper's Iraq correspondent. The article goes on to state, the gun battles between soldiers and militiamen, who are all Shia Muslims, show that, the, that Iraq's majority Shia community is splitting apart for the first time. Sadr's followers believe the government is trying to eliminate them before elections in southern Iraq later this year, which they are expected to win. Patrick Coburn has been covering Iraq since 1977. Seymour Hirsch has described Coburn as quite simply the best Western journalist at work in Iraq today. His book, The Occupation War, The Occupation, War and Resistance in Iraq, was shortlisted for a National Book Critics Circle Award last year. His new book comes out next week. It is titled Muqtada, Muqtada al sadr The Shia Revival and the Struggle for Iraq. Patrick Coburn joins us in London. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. The, the fighting that has erupted uh, in, the, in the last few days, uh, could you tell us uh, your sense of what is at stake here? Well, the Iraqi government has decided um, and has surprised everybody by deciding to uh, send its troops into Basra. Uh, ostensibly, they're saying it's to clean up criminal elements in Basra. In uh, reality, it seems an attack on the Mahdi army, and it's um, in alliance with the militias that are friendly to the Iraqi government. Um, the uh, uh, the Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki's uh, demand that the uh, fighters of the uh, Mehdi Army give up their weapons in 72 hours, I think it's extremely unlikely that this will, uh, this will happen. Uh, Saddam couldn't uh, disarm Iraq. It's not likely that Maliki, Maliki will succeed in doing so. Now, the, uh, obviously, for uh, more than a year now, we've, uh, we've heard of the, of the ceasefire. Uh, that Muqtada al sadr had declared. Uh, why did he initially declare the ceasefire, and, uh, and to what degree is your sense that this, uh, that this is the beginning of the end of that, if, if you think it is? Yeah, I mean, the ceasefire is very important, and everybody, including U.S. commanders, admit this was one of the reasons why there's been something of a fall in violence in Iraq, though not maybe it's been exaggerated. He, I think he declared the ceasefire for two reasons. Uh, one, he uh, wanted to clean up the Mahdi army, which was seen as Sunni, as really a large death squad. It was an, it become an umbrella organization for criminals. So he wanted to regain control of it. Um, secondly, he didn't want to fight a military, direct military confrontation with U.S. forces. Uh, he, um, he thought he'd uh, lose in those circumstances. Uh, so that's why he declared the ceasefire last August and uh, renewed it in February. Uh, he wanted also to get back political popularity. I mean, he's, this is the most popular figure among the Shia masses, but he was beginning to lose it because of the, uh, the Mahdi army was uh, uh, running rackets and um, uh, seen as becoming increasingly oppressive. Now, he, he, you, you've reported that he's called for uh, civil disobedience uh, across uh, Iraq in, in protest uh, of the government's latest moves. But you, you, in one of your articles, you say that civil disobedience uh, for, in Iraq is quite different than, uh, than here in the United States we might, uh, we might be accustomed to. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, the thing in Iraq is that pretty well everybody has a gun, so you have civil disobedience, you know, protest marches. Uh, but if anybody, but all the people who take part, either some they have guns or if they don't have them with them, they have immediate access to firearms. So it's much, much closer to real uh, uh, fighting than civil disobedience would be in America or in Britain. Now, uh, what's the level of uh, British and U.S. 
uh, troop involvement uh, in this latest offensive, and uh, and why should they be involved at all if supposedly the South uh, increasingly has come under uh, direct uh, Iraqi government and Iraqi military control? Yeah, it's a very good question, and I think goes to the heart of the matter. I mean, the answer is that not much happens in the Iraqi army that isn't in directed by the United States. I mean, the Ministry of Defense is uh, at least partially under American control in Baghdad, uh, intelligence also. Uh, so I think when the U.S. says, oh, we have nothing to do with it, I think that this really isn't true. First of all, militarily, there are helicopters, there are aircraft there. We've had reports this morning of a, an airstrike in a city called Hilla, which is uh, mostly Shia, southwest of Baghdad, in which 60 people have been killed and wounded, which is part of the present turmoil. There are helicopters and aircraft overhead in Basra. Uh, so there is involvement. And it certainly wouldn't have this present offensive wouldn't have taken place unless the U.S. military commanders had okayed it. And to what degree are, are the, is the, the possibility now? We, we obviously, for for the first few years, the, the discussion was: was there a civil war uh, in Iraq between uh, Sunni and Shia? But now the issue uh, can uh, quite clearly become: is there a civil war among the Shia themselves? To what degree do you think the United States is uh, uh, is uh, hoping uh, to be able to stamp out Muqtad al Sadr uh, and the Mehdi Army through this offensive? Well, they've, you know, they've always been very, the U.S. has always been very hostile to Muqtada. And this came from, from the very beginning of 2003. And then when Jerry Bremer was U.S. Viceroy in Iraq, there was an extraordinary degree of sort of venom and uh, demonization of Muqtada, describing him as Hitler and so forth. And curiously, also an underestimation of him. Because while well, the one time moment they'd uh, uh, say that uh, he was like Hitler, at, other, at another moment, Bremer was just trying to arrest him and thinking there'd be no reaction. So there's always been extreme hostility on the part of the U.S. Uh, mainly, I think, because Muqtada is the, the most important leader on the Shia side who's consistently called for an end to the U.S. occupation, for a U.S. withdrawal. Uh, and also maybe because he's a cleric, he wears uh, a black turban, so in many uh, minds of many American politicians, maybe he uh, looks um, alarmingly like a younger version of uh, Atala Khomeini. But I think the main thing they have against him is that he wants the U.S. to withdraw. Now, the, uh, the, the southern part of, of Iraq obviously has the, the bulk of the, of the production of oil. I think about 1.5 million barrels a day are coming out of mm. the area around Basra. Uh, to, to, mm. to what extent uh, is the, this latest battle uh, having an impact on the, the, the production of oil, or to what degree is it uh, 